The breakup of the RMS Titanic is confirmed in 1985 when the wreck is discovered. They discovered that the ship lies at the sea floor at two pieces. Nowadays, there are many theories on how the ship broke in two. In this video, I will be explaining my own breakup theory, which is based off Roy Mengoff. The Mengoth theory is a theory created and named by Roy Mengoth. This is how it works. The Mengoth theory shows that the ship broke due to compression forces and not fracture tension, which resulted in a bottom-to-top break. The keel would have failed first and been forced to buckle upwards into the lower decks as the breakup shot up to the upper decks. After the break, the ship was held together by the B deck as the hull's contents spilled out of the ship. B deck failed and caused the aft tower and forward tower support structures to detach from the stern as the bow was freed and sank. Then the stern pivots 180 degrees before disappearing. Here is a visualization. Roy states that the breakup has to comply to four rules. Number one, the breakup has to sink the stern section. Number two, the keel can't perform like shoe leather, they're rigid. Number three, steel just can't separate, there has to be a force. And number four, the breakup must leave the wreck we see right now. Have you ever tried bending a stick trying to break it in half? When the stick starts going into a curve, it starts to experience a force called the tension and the compression. The tension is a force that stretches or breaks itself apart, while compression is a force that crushes everything up. This also occurs on the Titanic when it reaches 15 degrees but no higher than 23 degrees when the compression force starts building up the keel while the upper decks are slowly crushed due to tension forces. There is a thing called stress. Stress is the force acting on the unit area of a material and can deform a material. Exactly before the Titanic breaks, it has an extreme stress and starts to break the ship. Let's rewind to 2.15 am when the ship starts its final plunge. The ship was down by the head around 10 to 12 degrees and the ship experiences a light to moderate stress. As she continued to get higher and higher, the stress gets stronger and stronger till the keel, the upper decks, and the ship itself fails. The uppermost decks of the ship, the A deck and the boat deck are not fully attached to the ship's hull. Both decks have a natural division point called expansion joints. These joints allow the superstructure to flex on top of the structural hull. These divisions in the forward and aft sections of the ship's upper decks help the ship to take stresses. Expansion joints also appear in roads and buildings but we're not going to talk about that. This also affects by the time the Titanic reaches a 15 to 23 degree angle. The upper decks were stretched than what they're designed to be. When the keel fails due to extreme stress and the upper decks also fails, the cracks run around the ship, splitting it to different sections. Here we have the introduction of the four main sections. The forward tower section, the aft tower section, the bow section, and the stern section. The bow section of the ship features many decks and rooms like the forecastle, the forward wheel deck, the squash court, the bridge, the grand staircase, some boiler rooms, and more. Like the bow, the stern section features many decks and rooms like the poop deck, the aft wheel deck, second class staircase, the engines, the turbines, and more. The forward tower section is made of decks on the uptick of the third funnel. At the back of the forward tower section is the normal aft expansion joints. Then the aft tower section which includes the majority of the aft grand staircase. There are also other sections that fall off during the break like the galley decks. After the breakup when the stern starts to rise again, the forward and the aft tower sections broke off underwater.
Before the breakup at around 2.16, many survivors describe the great noise of rumbling noises. They think that those are the boilers that explode, rip apart, or tumbling forward. What that actually was is the stress that the keel and the metal create. This signals that the ship is about to break apart. Then the keel fails, the upper deck fails, the ship has broken in two. Let's take a look at some survivor testimony. Testimony by Thomas Whiteley, a first class dining steward. When I got the rope on my leg off, I came to the top, made for some wreckage which I hung on to. Just in time to see the Titanic blow her sides away. She broke in the middle, her forward end went down, the aft end righted itself, went right up into the air and disappeared. So she must have been full of water as there was no air in her. There was no suction or I would have not been healed. The phrase blow her sides away may have referred to the sparks that blast up the brake area. Here's another from Esther Hart. Then, with a mighty and tearing sob as of the gigantic thing instinct with life, the front portion of her divided into the sea and after part the heavy list also disappeared. For a few moments, you could see everything that was happening. For, as the vessel sank, millions and millions of sparks flew up and lit everything around us. We have another testimony by Emily Rice. Then suddenly, when we still seemed very near, we saw the ship was sinking rapidly. I was in the bow of the boat with my daughter and turned to see the great ship take a plunge toward the bow. The two forward funnels seemed to lean and then she seemed to break in half as if cut with a knife and as the bow went under, the light went out. The stern stood up for several minutes, black against the stars, and then that too plunged down and there was no sound for what seemed like ours. The term the two forward funnels seemed to lean may have referred to the movement of the funnels during the settlement of the stern. Due to the reinforcing of B-Deck, the forward tower may have still connected to the rest of the ship. This made passengers think they saw it break into halves like the testimony of George Pelham. When about half a mile off, we heard two explosions and rumbling noises. Directly afterwards, she seemed to break in two and the stern to partly right itself for a brief period. The lights were burning till the last. As after the breakup, the stern starts to rise again. Underwater, the forward tower is dislodged, then the aft tower that got dislodged by the force of the dislodging forward tower. Then the ship goes at a near vertical angle, like 70 to 80 degrees, which when it will rotate 180 degrees due to the list to port. When it rotates 100 to 120 degrees, it starts going down. This is claimed by R. Norris Williams. It was an extraordinary sight. As the bow went under, the stern lifted higher and higher into the air, then piloted and swung slowly over my head. Looking straight off, I saw the three propellers and the rudders distinctly outlined against the clear sky. She described just about a semicircle and then slid into the ocean facing England. No sanction, no noise, two or three big waves, stillness. Then the cries and yells of 1,600 people struggling in the ice cold water. Finally, the ship goes down along with the 1,500 people on board that will fight for their lives in the freezing North Atlantic. The question is, how did the passengers know that the ship really broke apart? First, the sparks that blast out of the brake area. They are very bright that they can illuminate the brake section for a while. 
Second, the emergency lights that are still on, so it gave people an idea that it broke apart. It was also loud during the breakup. Now we know the events of the breakup and how it happened. Here is a simulation of the breakup along with narration. 2.17 AM, the ship continues to rise. Stress builds up the keel and the upper decks are slowly crushed due to tension forces. The stress is too extreme. At an angle of 22 degrees, the keel fails. The upper deck also fails seconds later. Sparks burst out the brake area. Due to expansion joints on the ship, the cracks run around the ship, splitting it to sections. There are four main sections in the ship. The forward tower, the aft tower, the bow section, and the stern section. At a port list between 15 to 20 degrees, the stern starts to rise. The forward tower and aft tower sections are dislodged from their places underwater. The stern is at a 70 to 80 degree angle, which will stay up for a while. The stern starts rotating 180 degrees due to the port list and slowly starts facing towards England. The stern starts going down with 1,500 people on board. Some are still in the interiors. Even though Roy passed away before revising his breakup theory, many people got inspired by his theory and starts making variants out of it. One of these is me. 
It took me time to understand Roy's theory, the principles, survivor counts, rules, and physics. This theory is made using researches and asking questions. Thanks to Shin Goji for helping me out with this theory.